Hi, I'm Malcolm. And I'm Rachel. We're two Canadians living on our 39-foot main ship trawler, living an adventure of a lifetime. We invite you to follow along as we travel 6,000 miles through Canadian and U.S. waterways around America's Great Loop. Good morning from Davis Lock. We were just talking about our options for the next few days and the forecast is looking pretty wet. Uh, in fact, today is good, except there'll be thunderstorms later, they say, and uh, tomorrow's going to be just full-on rain, I think. So we're, we were wanting to stay here an extra day because it's not busy here and it's very calm and quiet, very enjoyable. But I think we've decided we're going to carry on to another lock that has power. So at least uh, if we're stuck for a couple of days, we uh, won't be without power. The solar's doing pretty well, actually, in, on cloudy days. It just depends if it's really thick cloud. It's, uh, it struggles a little bit. So we're uh, having a nice, relaxed, easy start to the day, and we're going to head through the locks very shortly. Hope you're having a great day. We just entered the lock at Davis and nice, easy, relaxed morning. morning. This is a report from the bridge. We're on our way to Upper Brewer is our end destination today, but we'll be stopping at Jones Falls, which is uh, one lock at the top, a basin in the middle, and three locks at the bottom. It takes a little while to get through. We're going to stop there. Maybe we'll sample their ice cream, and then we'll move on to Upper Brewer. There will be a bit of weather coming in this afternoon, so we're hoping that will be tied up at a dock and we can wait that weather out. And in fact, there's even supposed to be quite a bit of rain the next day. So, um, but today's a great day to travel, a little overcast, it's a little cooler, and I think we're gonna have a great day exploring Jones Falls. And that's a report from the bridge.
We've reached the top of Jones Falls, or just about to. It's fun going through these channels that kind of wind and twist around and seeing all the different cottages along the way. It's very calm. You can see the water's calm today. And uh, we'll probably be heading down. We'll have to check out and see where they are in the lock system. Sometimes you have to wait a couple of hours to get through because they're locking up when you're trying to lock down and vice versa. So it's a nice day to be out. It's not raining. Uh, so it should be pretty easy today. Not too hot yet either. Probably one of the most interesting and prettiest lock stations along the Rideau Canal is at Jones Falls. It divides Sand Lake at the top and Whitefish Lake at the bottom. The locks are positioned with one chamber at the top, which opens onto a large basin, and then a set of three locks down to the bottom. Jones Falls is home to the Great Stone Arch Dam. After it was built in 1831, it was the highest dam in North America at nearly 60 feet. It was quite an engineering feat for its day and is still an impressive structure. We're in the second last chamber of Jones Falls. And yeah, they're gonna, about to open the doors here. We'll have one more chamber after this.
there's our boat over there on that dock. And you can see behind me, they're already loading the lock up again with more boats to go up. We're going to go over to Kenny's and have an ice cream. Down at the bottom of Jones Falls, there are a few docks for mooring. And just to one side of this bridge is a fish sanctuary. There is also the famous Hotel Kenny, which recently changed hands, and the new owner is working hard to get it back up and running. While waiting to lock up or down, it's a favorite spot to stop for an ice cream or even a meal. We went to the little store at Hotel Kenny. I'm just going to need to go back because they've reopened this year. I got Betty's Blueberry Cheesecake Ice Cream, and we got a box of cookies and a cinnamon roll in there. It's good to see them open. They've been closed for a while. Talked to the new owners who came down the lock, and he's, he's really going to be doing a lot of dinner, brunch, um, it's going to be a full service uh, dining and uh, eventually I guess he's going to have a hotel again. So uh, encourage anybody who's uh, coming this way, yep. drop into Hotel Kenny. Apparently the food is fantastic. And there's a dock where you can tie up your boat. It's not part of Parks Canada, but they do have power and you can pay to stay there. And or you could stay at Parks Canada you dock and walk a, over. Yep, you could do that too. So now that we've gone through Jones Falls, the bottom of Jones Falls turns into Whitefish Lake, which is where we are now. And we're headed towards Lower Brewer, and we know there's some storms coming later, so we would have preferred to stop before this to go just over here. There's a bay called Morton's Bay with some pretty high rock cliffs on either side. Um, and it's a great spot to stop if you wanna just swim or just have some nice and quiet in there. And the entrance to get in, actually, I don't know if you can see from here, but it's a little, it looks dicey to get in because there's rocks and things. And you have to do a little curve to get in there, but it's definitely well worth going in there. We're going to bypass it today, sadly, but if you look at one of our earlier videos, we were doing a, sort of a shakedown cruise before we actually started the Trent Severn waterway when it was closed. And we came up here we anchored there and uh, that's a really great spot. Highly recommend that.
just up here and to my left is Seely's Bay. It's a little town that's pretty close to Kingston and a nice stop if you're going by boat. One year we went there and they were having a, I think it was a church barbecue. We got some chicken dinners. That was really good. And we didn't know about it until we got there, so it was a nice little surprise. But it's a little, small little town and, uh, you know, they have kind of one of everything and just nice to be able to stop there and support these local towns or villages as we're going along the Rideau Canal. Today, because of the weather, we're going to have to go further up to a lock so we can plug in. But it is uh, a nice stop and we've gone here a few times before with our kids when they were young and, and later as well. Very nice stop. Oh, and I see a Laboat there. There's another Laboat rental. This part of the Rideau Canal is part of the Cataraqui watershed, which includes all the lakes south of the watershed divide at Newborough, like Newborough, Clear, Opinikin, Sand, Whitefish, and Cranberry Lakes, all the way to Kingston. The name Cataraqui was the original name for Kingston. It is a derivation of an indigenous name for the Kingston area. The exact meaning is undetermined, but it might mean great meeting place, where the rivers and lake meet, or place where the limestone or clay is.
After traveling 13 nautical miles in 5 hours 40 minutes, we arrived at Upper Brewer's Lock and stayed at the top of the lock with power. Then it was time for some fishing. <laughs> there you go, little fishies. We're about to get hit with a big storm, and we've had warnings for storms for the last few days, but this one is definitely coming our way, and we'll see how quickly it passes us. Uh, we had the AC on for a little bit, we're plugged in, but it feels already like it's cooling off a wee bit. Not sure if it's just my imagination. But there's some lots of rumbles and things going on right now. A bit of lightning in the distance. And it's looking pretty gray. 